Reader's Digest does a lot of what could be considered to be the most common type of philosophy, which is basically about writing summaries and glosses. Although the literature of Christmas shared herein is not always abridged, whether there are stories, songs, poems, examples of letters that people wrote out. There's a section on Christmas around the world. Some guy carrying a lamb. Some st various other things that they know has a pre-Christian origin. Some stuff just is what they arranged with the material culture around that season. You know, the fresh plants or the not fresh plants or whatever they were trying to say. Um how they wanted to enact those stories. If you follow the logic of Christmas not including the eve and then crossing into the day like a like a biblical day, but being the 25th of December, if we say that Mithra's day was the 5th of Yule, we'd have to say that this year, 2019, and obviously some years to come, that same day in the solar calendar way, would be considered to be the 26th of December instead of the 25th. And we, of course, have bits from Luke. You know, Matthew has the story of the birth of Jesus, too. And, I mean, as well if there's any confusion about my use of the word too, um, there's another section in this book, and this section is referring to stuff about Saturnalia and stuff like that. Now, the mythology of Christmas. Now, some of it brings up Christian ethics or other ethics that have you know, come to fill in the gaps. Others, it's the sort of entertainment that people like that time of year. The vestiges, the pre-Christian stuff, a lot of it. Lessons that animals have to have. Some astrological information makes their way into the stories. Sentiments of the workers. Whatever values that people want to get across in a different way, but still connect the whole thing to Christmas. The various gifts, giving out, and all that stuff. You don't have to take part in Christmas or any such holiday for any of that, but um, the meaning and purpose is important. <laughs>